My analysis of a literary adaptation will regard the short story *The Swimmer* by the famous writer John Cheever, turned into a film by Frank Parry in 1968. *The Swimmer* is a metaphorical story full of symbolism. The plot apparently makes no sense, but it's so full of meaning as to seem the story of each one of us. It's no wonder. In the trailer of the film, we can hear the speaker ask the viewers, "When you talk about the swimmer, will you talk about yourself?" John William Cheever lived between 1912 and 1982, and he is one of the undisputed masters of contemporary American fiction. Often called the Chekhov of the suburbs, Cheever loved to paint in his writings middle-class characters. Who populated at the beginning of the century the great villas of the Upper East Side of Manhattan and the New England, where he himself grew up. His characters deeply experience the dualism of human nature. They are characterized by a significant disparity between appearance and inward corruption, live social and family conflicts, and embody the opposite. Decline and nostalgia are recurring themes, perhaps. Due to the writer's personal experience, the short story *The Swimmer* appeared for the first time in *The New Yorker* on the 16th July 1964. It's a midsummer afternoon. Ned is at his friend's house. The atmosphere is relaxed. All the people have drunk too much the day before, and they can only exchange a few comments while the rest in the sun. Ned cannot stand men who can't dive into a swimming pool, and compared to the others, he is a legendary figure. For this reason, he decides to get up and carry out his idea: swimming home. His villa is located eight miles south from the house of his friends, and he can easily reach it waterways, a road made of fifteen private pools and a public one. He knows the pools one by one. He knows the names of all owners. They form a river, which he names after his wife, Lucinda. Ned begins his journey step by step, different one another, pool by pool. The viewer witnesses Ned's evolution. At first, he is welcomed by his friends. He is happy and physically handsome, but then he slowly finds out he has forgotten key events of his life and of. That of his neighbors, his body weakens, his dignity is trampled on several times, both by how he is treated in the public pool and by his friends' innuendos. They say he has asked them for money. In only one afternoon, Ned's life switches from a dream into a nightmare. Once arrived at his destination in heavy rain, he finds out his house is empty and abandoned. And he understands he has really lost all his fortune, and he is now a lonely man. This story is likely to, to have been written after Cheever's father, Frederick Lincoln Cheever, who, badly hit by the economic crisis, saw his life entirely destroyed, and consequently started to drink, that, thus causing further problems to his family. However, This does not seem to be the only autobiographical element in the story. Ned, in fact, only talks with female characters, who become increasingly hostile towards him. This could be a reflection of the author's relationship with his wife at the moment he wrote the story. Male characters do not appear very often. They don't talk and are somewhat subdued. This helpless man. Might embody Cheever's inability to interact with his wife, his feeling of being victimized and belittled by such a bulky presence. Ned's journey towards the truth, his try to hide himself, is marked by the kindness of his friends, the weather, the condition of his body, and his memory, which wavers. Ned starts his journey on a summer Sunday. Everybody is smiling. His body is strong and beautiful. Although he is not a young boy, he is happy and he feels he could do anything. When he gets home, however, 
things are quite different. Lonely, tired, and strengthless, he finds his house deserted and in ruins. He must now face the truth, face its economic collapse, his loneliness. And the viewer understands it's not a matter of an afternoon. It has been rather fifteen years, an entire phase of his life, of his dramatic decline. In 1968, The Swimmer, directed by Frank Parry, was screened, starring Burt Lancaster as Ned Merrill. The critics did not like the film. Columbia Pictures itself released it two years after production because it was too intellectual and asked Sidney Pollack to direct two scenes, including the dialogue between Ned and his lover, Shirley. Lancaster's performance is the only positive element in the film. The actor himself called it the best film he did. The short story is only made of 11 pages. There are only a few dialogues, and Ned's feelings are told by the description of the environment, rather than by the character's words. It is therefore clear that, in writing the film's subject, Eleanor Perry, the director's wife, had to create new dialogues and events. In the story, the protagonist can move from a place to another much more rapidly than in the film. For this reason, there are 15 pools in the story and only 9 in the film. The highway is next to Shirley's house and the order of the pools is slightly different. Two dialogues are inserted. The first takes place at the Biswangers, where Ned recognizes his hot dog wagon and wants to have it back. He hands up arguing with the hosts who have bought it at an auction and laugh at Ned's proposal to buy it back for $1,000. The second edit scene is a dialogue between Ned and two couples at the public swimming pool, the list visited by Ned in the film. The two couples ask Ned when he will pay his debts. He doesn't remember yet, and he believes that nothing of what they say has ever happened. The second couple also argues that his daughters and wife are no longer proud of him and call him a loser even in front of other people. The end of the film is very evocative and conveys to the viewer the same feelings of the short story, perhaps even making them clearer and stronger. Films like this are not always appreciated by all viewers, being metaphorical stories that one has to draw up in order to fully understand their meaning. Ten years later, probably, the swimmer would not have seemed so weird and intellectual. It would have just been one of the many nonsense films typical of the 70s, and probably many viewers would have seen themselves in the swimmer.